Good morning, afternoon, good day. Uh, I'm coming from Ecclesiastes 1019. And one of the statements made in that, and I'll read the verse, the feast is made for laughter and wine makes merry, but money answers all things. And that verse, I kind of looked at that negatively at first, thinking, well, the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, but the more I thought about it, and here a while back ago, I discussed it with a brother in the Lord who gave a little different insight in a positive way as well. And then I realized when it comes to money matters with a Christian, in all things, the Bible says we're more than conquerors. We all have to deal with these things in life, especially money. Money is an issue. Money does matter in the sense I can determine, it can determine, like the Bible says, where your treasure is, there your, there your heart is. It can determine who a person is. It determines as well the preacher. And it goes without saying, in this day and age, there was a time where the, you know, you watch some of the stuff on TV and they tried to be a little sneaky about it. Now it's just blatant greed. It's over the top nonsense. And it's so silly, folks. I mean, the Bible talks about do not your alms before men. And what do they do? They have a telethon and then they have somebody call in and then they name their name over the air and how much they gave. Well, which part of not doing your alms before men do we misunderstand? Let alone a telethon. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's about as dumb and brain dead as it comes. But the point is, it shows you where their treasure is, there your heart is. They have not established their place in how to deal with money. Not their money's, there's nothing wrong with money. I had a person a couple years ago talk about money as a tool. And that helped put it in a proper perspective. You know, a carpenter can have a, a handsaw. A bandsaw. Well, they can use it to cut the wood, or in in the hands of an unskilled person, it can cut their arm or any other body part. It can be used for good or it can be negative. It's a matter of how it's used. The Bible says, and Paul wrote about it, and we're seeing Paul's writings as well as Solomon. Solomon talks about, and we'll get into Ecclesiastes a little bit today, or in the next couple of studies. And Paul talked about the root of all evil is the love of money. Money itself is not bad. It's not something to be afraid of. It's not like you bring it in. It's not like Superman with kryptonite. You bring it in the room and, oh, no, get that out of here. Oh. It's learning to be an overcomer. I think of a, as a teenager, a youngster growing up. Well, girls were icky. Girls were this. Well, all of a sudden, puberty hit, and I had to deal with girls and women in a whole different way, so to speak. <laughs> well, anything can be perverted. Or it can be a wonderful thing. I find marriage to be a wonderful thing. It's blessed of the Lord. There's nothing dirty about the human body or, you know, uh, being in love and sharing that with a husband and wife in that setting. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the world today, it's so perverted and twisted and taken out of context. The same with money. Money, you know, the Bible says covetousness is idolatry. Colossians 3, uh, 5 talks about that. Ephesians 5.5 5 as well. Covetousness is idolatry. That's where you put something ahead of God. Where you decide, you think something is more important or something's going to bring you peace. And instead of God. Godliness with contentment is great gain. It's learning to be satisfied with your allotment. The, you know, the Lord teaches to pray. Okay, give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. Learning to be content. Money answers a lot of things. Of course, it's nice to have money at the end of the month when it's time to make the car payment, a rent payment, a house payment. I'm not talking about being dirt poor either. In everything we talk about with money, there's a just weight and balance. Sometimes you hang on too tight and the Lord's saying, I'd like you to let go. I'd like you to do something with your money. I want you to be a little more open. Because it's all the Lord's anyway. 
you know, we see that, and I talked about that here a while ago on our studies with taxes and Christians, how Christians are to deal with taxes. Oh, you know, you ask any one of them, and yeah, Christ is our example. Christ, well, we're Christ-like. That's what a Christian means. I'm Christ-like. <laughs> Until it comes time to pay taxes, and it's like, well, no, not that Christ. I'm out of here. Well, no. God loves a cheerful giver. If it's the Lord's, and the Lord himself said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and the things to God, things are God. What's the problem? Let's go to Luke 12. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a brief synopsis. You know, definitely in these studies, go back and read over it. These are like, if it's a homework assignment, if it's important, there's other parts in these chapters that you can read through and glean more off of. But in the studies, I'm giving you kind of an overview and a, something to get you started, and then maybe go back and look these over, the whole chapter. But 24 is an interesting, uh, 12, Luke 12, 24, consider the ravens, where they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, could add one stature, one cubit unto his stature? So, you know, the, law, the Lord said it's the spirit that gives life to flesh profits. Nothing. The flesh is of no profit. You know, we sit here and think of all these ways to make money. And then you see this stuff, you know, with these preachers today. got all these gimmicks and, you know, well, give me your money and you'll get a hundredfold return. Well, that's nonsense. The hundredfold return is what the Lord requires of his spirit. He gave, he gave out of his spirit. And he said, I expect, you know, they brought forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100. Bringing forth the fruit of the Spirit to maturity. That's the hundredfold return. We should be bringing to him. Not handing him a check and then waiting like, oh, well, I gave you $100. I should get a barrel of money in return. That's stupid. But that's what man promotes. That's how man's perverted it. Verse 26. If you then are not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? And then he goes on to talk about consider the lilies. They don't do anything. They just sit there. And yet look at how the splendor and the beauty. But the point is, and, and these, especially with ministers, if you can't get to this, past this point, which the Lord considers least, don't even think about the rest because you're done. And when I see these people begging for money, for lack of a better term, I see the place where they sold out, where they drew the line and where they sold out to the Lord and, and see how far they've gone. That's as far as they've gone. You know, salvation is a 180. The Bible says the first shall be last and the last first. The Bible talks about look not on your own things, but the things of others. Paul wrote it's more blessed to give than receive. Is that the mindset you have? Do you look more on the things of others? Are you as concerned about what they have as you are about yourself? The last shall be first, the first last. Well, what used to be last on your priority list, the Lord suddenly moved up first when you became born again because all of a sudden you realized you know these lifeless religions i was attending before did nothing for me but all of a sudden i got hold of something that actually works that now became a priority and then you know like the bible says that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of god well what's esteemed well all we see is money 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 make money more money more money more happiness blah 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 not necessarily. I, I've i watched and I look and I pick up the paper and, you know, these rock stars, famous people, they're either getting divorced or they're in rehab, suffering from depression, or they're broke. I watched a documentary one time on athletes. And how many of them are broke? These are guys that were given 50, 100 plus million dollar contracts and they're broke. <laughs> they're broke. In fact, there's a verse that talks about that back in the Old Testament, in Haggai. And you can look this up, and I'll read it for you. In Haggai 1.5, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. You have sown much, you bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe, but there is none warm. And he that earns wages, earns wages to be put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. So that's that's being under the curse, where you're always a day late and a dime short. Well, that's not the blessing. So, 
and it's kind of like people that go in business. When you pray about somebody going in business, we don't pray that they're going to fail or, well, I won't make enough. I'll just, I'll go, I'll go broke and be poor so the Lord can humble me and teach me. No, you pray and, and you thank the Lord when you see it prosper, when you, when it prospers. But there's a just way and balance with everything. That's what we're talking about today. This is how you learn to be an overcomer because you find that just weight and balance. You're satisfied with the allotment God's given you. Now, if he chooses to bless you and open his uh, purse strings, that's okay too, as long as you can handle it. It's a matter of you having the mastery over it or it has the mastery and domain over you or dominion. I'll use that term. It's one or the other. You have... The power of God within you. Greater, is that a greater influence in the things of the world? Or are the things of the world drowning out the things of God and, and that greater influence in you? It's all a matter of choice. If I Here's an honest, I'll give you a, a little test for yourself. Something you can honestly do. On the right hand, you're in a room. They said, you're going to leave here and go out and live your life. On the right hand, I'm going to hand you a brand new Bible with your name on it and your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life as well. Or on the left hand, I got a bag full of money, $2 million tax-free. You have a choice. Which one are you leaving with? And that's something you can ask yourself. You know, well, of course, if we're all standing, people are sitting in church, you know, well, of course, I'll take the Bible. But would you? Would the preacher? Or is he sold out? This is where a lot of people don't move on well let's let's move a little further here in Luke 12 uh, Luke 16 actually and this is a good verse or a good chapter to read the whole thing of Luke because it's talking about an unjust steward and and how you handle finances with other people as well can determine a heavenly place the Bible talks about the wages of the hiring that are held back are crying unto the Lord that's in Luke uh, excuse me, uh, that's in James 5, 14, 5, 4, and then 5, 4. Uh, Colossians 4, 1 talks about, and, and think of yourself too, if you have people working for you. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal. Well, make it just and equal for them. Everybody wants something for nothing until they go to work, and they want the top dollar. Well, are you as willing to give as you are to receive? Paul said, I, I wish you were more willing to give and receive. How many times have you seen these shows? You've experienced it. you have given something out of the blue. You've done something, and that peace and that joy comes for what you did for other people. How touching is it? They have a show called Undercover Boss, where the guy goes in amongst the people, disguises himself, and at the end of the show rewards them, and your heart is just touched. Common, ordinary people are blessed with things that they need, that they appreciate. And it touches your heart to see to do that for other people. And I'm going to skip down here in Luke 16. I'm in verse 9. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon, or finances, money, of unrighteousness, that when, when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Now, I, I've read some of the commentaries, and they talk about having witnesses, people you know, that you've dealt with, that you haven't screwed over financially or taken advantage of, but you've dealt with them in a fair and just way. You you decided it was more blessed to give than receive. So that when you stand before the Lord, you're not going to have any point in your finger saying, this guy just robbed me blind. And you see that with the ministries today. It's not like we have preachers anymore. What we have is CEOs of religious corporations. That's what it seems like anymore. We don't have preachers, we have auctioneers bidding bidding the, the blessings of God to the highest, or should I say the lowest bidders. So make yourselves friends of the mammon. And then it goes on in verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least, well, there's that word least again. So these are, it should be the least of your concerns. The Lord promises he'll take care of his people. Only if you let him. You know, the Lord, I was like, well, Lord, I want you to do this, you know, and I want you to be my sword. Well, let me. Uh, Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. People, why does it happen? Because you won't let him. Will, can you be like the lilies of the field? Be still enough and let the Lord take over. Or the ravens. The ravens aren't concerned about the stock market. 
He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you that which is your own? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or God and money. You can't put anything ahead of God. That's what covetousness, idolatry. You've put something ahead of the Lord. But you have to be faithful in this area before you're going to move on. And then you have to overcome. And you, you your mind, you know, the Bible says, set your affection on things above. Colossians 3.1. That's singular. And then seek ye first, and then all these things are at it. So this should be the least of your concerns. So it's getting things into proper perspective. It's learning to be an overcomer. There's nothing wrong with money. You know, I... <laughs> If you've got it, hallelujah, as long as you have the power and the ability to enjoy it. And that's what we'll talk about in the next study. God bless and stay rich in faith.